Hello again. Welcome to yet another episode of Illini Cast. That's right. I'm doing double duty today. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, knock out a Yukon preview. I hope you guys are able to watch this. I'm going to have a notification on my screen. I think you guys can. But uh, essentially, we're going to learn a little bit about uh, the team that we're going to be facing on Saturday. If you're kind of like me, uh, you know, as obviously I have two shows, I have the Big Ten show and I have the Illini cast, which is what you're watching me on now. I don't exactly pay too much attention to what's going on elsewhere. Now, obviously, I know I we hear about UConn. We saw their dominant run last year. Uh, we know the job Dan Hurley's doing is arguably the best job uh, in the entire country. But when it comes to actually knowing what their team is like, what they're like, I, I don't know much about them except for the fact that they're very, very good. So I decided to bring on a guest today. His name is Mark Zanetto from Locked on Yukon. Mark, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Uh, if you don't mind, if you want to just tell the viewers here uh, where they can find you. Yeah, sure. I mean, I know this is a big Big Ten prod podcast, an Illinois podcast, but if you guys want to see uh, anything that we're doing at Lock, I mean, Locked on has a myriad of, of shows. Uh, Locked on Yukon's on YouTube every day. Uh, we do a show. It's I, I rarely go live. Uh, days of games, uh, we typically will try to every once in a while. But there's a live uh, Locked On College Basketball uh, program that goes live. A lot of times it takes care of uh, things with a dual host and they have a panel. But Locked On UConn is on every day on YouTube. You can find it on any podcast, Apple, Spotify, whatever, wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, you can download it and listen to what I have to say. Which is a lot, and deservedly so. I mean, UConn is on one heck of a run. Um, I did a kind of small, it was more of a recap for our Sweet 16 game. Um, earlier in the day with Austin, and we just kind of briefly made our predictions for uh, our Elite Eight matchup on Saturday evening. But, mm -hmm. man, uh, since then, I've been kind of passively watching film on uh, UConn and just listening to what other people have been saying. And, all right, well, we're in for a tough matchup, and I'm not sure if uh, Illini fans quite realize the tough matchup that uh, we're going to be dealing with. Now, Mark, uh, just to let you know, I get – called out for being an Illinois content creator who doesn't believe in Illinois, which is not <laughs> true. Uh, I just predicted that we were going to lose the last round, but I honestly said it was going to be a 50, 50 game. And I just thought Iowa state would pull it off. You know, I mean, it's, it is what it is. And of course I, uh, I predicted a double digit loss to UConn tomorrow, but let's get to that in a little bit. Uh, first off, uh, the, what, what I usually do is I asked, the content creator or whoever media type that I bring on to give us kind of an idea of what the expectations were coming in for the team that they cover. Now you're going to have a much more unique answer than some of the previous uh, guests I've brought on, but regardless, I'm going to ask you the same question. UConn Huskies sure. this year, what were the expectations <clears throat> and kind of on a grand scale, how's the season gone for you guys? Yeah, I mean, 30,000 foot view when we came into this season, um, I would say that we uh, didn't want to get our hopes up too much to have this type of opportunity to repeat. So I think a lot of fans were guarded and what you see on Twitter, the bravado, the arrogance uh, lately probably wasn't there initially just because there were a lot of unknowns. Uh, Cam Spencer was coming in as a transfer. You had Steph Castle, who was a McDonald's All-American, but he was coming in and he tweaked his knee early, so um, people were people were questioning. And believe it or not, we're, after his Sweet Sixteen game, we're questioning whether or not he was that good, right? Um, <clears throat> and I'll get into that later, of kind of what Dan Hurley has done with these guys. But I think that because last year, I don't know if, how much everyone remembers this, but you kind of started off fourteen and one and was like number four in the country, and then they lost six of eight in the Big East, a very tough conference, as you guys know. And most of us were kind of like, okay, well, I mean, they're good, but we'll see how they go. And then they got hot. Again, lost in the Big East tournament and then went on the run. So um, going into this year to expect them to repeat was kind of a pipe dream early. But I think as the momentum of the season started happening, uh, going into the Big East uh, regular season after only losing to Kansas uh, on the road with Cam Spencer, her and no Steph Castle, we were like, this team's pretty good. So it's evolved. And now it's, it's, now it's an expectation. You know, Dan, the, what Dan Hurley likes to say is the standard is the standard. And the standard right now for UConn fans is um, if you have the capability to bet on them, 
at whatever the spread is, do it because they're likely going to cover. Um, and I, I say that as someone who doesn't bet often, but I bet every game over the last 14 games and I've covered every single time. Um, and I've also recently, since the YouTube channel has kind of grown a bit, has have, people have been chirping a little bit in, in the YouTube comments. And I said, okay, well, friendly wager, 100 bucks. Our team against your team. Northwestern happened, $100 richer. San Diego State happened, $100 richer. So, um, and I do have an Illinois bet. Uh, this gentleman, I, 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 if I can find his Twitter before the end of the show, I'll shout him out. He's an Illinois fan. He is backing your boys. No spread, just straight it. up. So I was just like, listen, man. Good for you. I'm, I, that, I I respect you. I don't. I think you're crazy, but I respect you. Yeah. So you know, let's just talk about this. Uh, I, I made a tweet earlier, which I think caught your attention. That uh, yeah. I've always heard stories. There's Illini Twitter, there's mm-hmm. Purdue Twitter, and there's UConn Twitter. Now, sure. Obviously, I'm in the thick of things when it comes to the Big Ten, so I know all about the Purdue and uh, Illini Twitter. It's just mudslinging back and forth. But overall, we're kind of very apprehensive, kind of shy, a little, we kind of have more of a defeatist attitude. Then I see, log into UConn Twitter today, and I'm getting chirped at, and I'm just like, I'm you know, <laughs> taking a look at some of the, the biggest accounts. You guys, you're not kidding when you say you legitimately think you guys are going to win every game by double figures, and that it's just uh, like a matter of time. And... I guess I was just thrown off by it because for the most part, I'm just used to a completely different attitude. I mean, when Illinois fans are talking to Illinois fans, there's a lot of, you know, nerves. We're on edge. Purdue fans, obviously, with, you know, the fact that they lost as a number one seed last year, there's nerves there. So it's just kind Mm -hmm. of a, let's just take it a game by game. Oh, I'm getting nervous. You know, uh, halftime, if it's tied, oh, how nervous are you? I'm pretty nervous right now. You guys, none of that. There, there is a you know just a supreme level of confidence that I'm honestly like I'm kind of envious of it because I don't share that at all and you know we have I mean, a very good basketball team. Yeah, I mean I'll be honest with you, man. I'm I don't know how old you guys are and how old you are. I'm I'm forty. I'll be forty three this year. This team is not has not always been like this. I've been a fan of this of this UConn. I was, I'm a Connecticut native, born and raised there. Um, you know, like. UConn was everything because we had no pro sports in Connecticut growing up, right? Yeah. The Whalers left when I was in high school. You know what I mean? So this was not – this This has taken some time. You know what I mean? Like sure. the the level of expectation and this is the crescendo, right? This is where we're at right now. This is this has not always been like that. In fact, I had a gentleman on who did a, a podcast called the Dream Season Pod about the first time UConn was a one seed in the tournament, lost to Duke in the Elite Eight. Uh, great podcast. If you're ever, it's just interested in NCAA tournament history, it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I had him on, and I was just like, "Do you still get nervous?" And he said, "Of course." Older guys like us, he's probably like fifty. Older guys like us still get nervous. The younger guys who have kind of lived this, they're you know, like they're like Patriots fans, like I, you know, like that have gone through like the six titles and they think they're invincible. Yeah, that I think that's where this this kind of aura has come from. Do I have confidence in this team? Absolutely, because I'm an I'm an adult and I can watch how they play and they play a style of basketball that is very different than what other people are are playing in, at this level in college basketball, and that's the reason why the metrics back them up. It's not just fandom, and we're like, yeah, we're really good. It's number one in offense, number six in defense. There's not a lot of weaknesses, so it's that's that's where kind of this Twitter confidence comes from. So. Obviously, you know, you guys haven't lost a game, I think, in the last two years in the tournament by uh, – or sorry, you haven't – 13 is the minimum that you've beaten uh, every team by. Uh, yep. And again, it's the tournament. It, you, you would think things could go uh, back and forth either way, but no, you guys have just kind of played very dominantly. Uh, I think you guys are the best team in the country. I didn't pick you guys to win the title, but only because it's so hard to repeat in men's college basketball. And so I – Personally, in my bracket, I had uh, Purdue uh, winning the game. And, you know, that's going to be an epic battle should it happen. But Mm -hmm. I'm hoping it doesn't. So let's just go ahead and kind of talk about the matchup that we play uh, uh, on Saturday. Now, my crowd, for the most part, is Illini fans. I'm assuming if you're not an Illini Mm -hmm. fan watching, I'm not sure why you are, but thank you. Uh, Or it's a Big Ten crowd. So 
if to the best of your knowledge, if you can just kind of give a brief scouting report on mm -hmm. what Illini fans who've never watched UConn play basketball uh, should expect to see tomorrow. You're going to see a lot of movement. Um, you can't key on one guy. Um, there is not a Terrence Shannon Jr. on our team that you can kind of box in and uh, and, and really, like, you know, I think he had 40% of the, the points in the last game. Um, that that's not that doesn't happen at UConn. Everyone averages double figures in the in the starting lineup. You have the six man of the year in the Big East, Hassan Biar coming off the bench. You have a uh, Zach Eady Light and Donovan Klingon. I think he's a better athlete. Um, he definitely is more not your traditional post player. He can come out and set screens. He can even hit a three from you know every once in a while. I think he's hit five this year, but unless they're winning by thirty, he typically does not. So that if you see that, you know you're in trouble. Um, but I, I think the the brand of basketball that they play is different. Um, I have to pick up on something that your that Brad Underwood said in his press conference that I'm sure Dan Hurley is bringing to his team's attention because he is a psycho and he will use any bulletin board material to get his guys fired up. That this is not any different than an, an offense that they've seen in the Big Ten. There is nothing that could be further from the truth. I watch, I have three TVs set up in my living room. My wife is a crazy sports fan, so we do not have, I don't have any issues when I watch sports with the young kids, anything. I watch Big Ten basketball, Big East basketball, mid-major basketball. There is, and this is not about, this is not a UConn take. UConn does not play, UConn plays the most intricate offense in the entire country. There is not one way, they don't, it's not just pick and roll, there's pin downs, there's flare screens. Just when you think you've you figured it out, someone cuts back door. Just when you think you know you're, they put you they put you in a paralysis by analysis situation. So when your defense feels like you've got like a handle on it, they give you another option. They they call their players processors. They're, it's 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 kind of the you know I had a guy on from Fox Sports who did a piece on how they built this offense. It's a it's a mixture of FIBA, a bunch of teams in the in the Euro League in Spain and um, in Turkey. And then a lot of the Golden State Warriors. It's a mixture of all that. They're going to shoot a ton of threes. You're not going to see any mid-range jumpers unless the shot clock is winding down. And the surprising thing is for a team that averages almost 80 points, they don't play at a fast pace. They're 312th out of 365 teams in pace of play, which means they just wear you down. They just wear you down, wait till you make a mistake, and they get an open shot. That's you cutting in a nutshell. So, yeah, I, I did actually notice that. You know, like – uh but okay, you know, let's just kind of circle around that. You have lost three times this year, mm -hmm. and uh, I, one of the shows I was watching, I forget who it was, you know, kind of pointed it out that the three games that you lost were your slowest paced games, uh, the least amount of possessions uh, sure. of the entire season. Now that obviously does not bode well for Illinois because that's not how we play. We're going to basically run, 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 and try to catch you unbalanced and try to, mm -hmm. you know, Terrence Shannon Jr. was third in the country in points per game and we don't run a single play for him. So it's, it's one of those just kind of keep you off balance type of um, offensive onslaughts that we do. Now, obviously pairing that with uh, per, or UConn's perceived weakness, if that's what you want to call it, it's not a great matchup, but is that fair to say? Like, how would you, if you're game planning against beating UConn, what would you do? I'd pray a lot. Um, I, mean, I know that's, you know, a silly thing to say, but it's, I would pray that they have a game like they had against Northwestern where they shot 12% from three. The problem with that is they shot 81% from two. So you gotta, you gotta catch them on a day where everything goes wrong. I, I don't mean that to be, you know, facetious. I'm, I'm dead serious. Like th there has to be a game. They have to feel bothered enough or threatened enough by Illinois where they're going to have an off game. That hasn't happened yet. It hasn't happened in two years in, in, in that respect. The only time, and also for context, they're 23-1 and one in their last neutral site games. The last loss was against Marquette in the Big East tournament last year. Those three losses this year were at Creighton, at Kansas, and at St. Seton Hall. So two Big East losses and an out-of-conference uh, loss all on the road. They haven't lost at home. They haven't lost on a neutral site. So to me, that's... That's the context you, that you don't get that. They, people just love to kind of throw out, well, they, they got blown out by Creighton. It's like, okay, on the road, Creighton shot 50% from three. If Illinois shoots 50% from three and they have a couple guys who normally don't play well that have career high games, then you're in business because that's what Creighton did. 
they had a guy, this is this, the dead serious is that they had their, their regular players did well, but they had a guy come off the bench who scored zero points to, in the season, hit three threes, was three or four from three, had a career high for his life. <laughs> so, so that if the formula is you have to shoot 50% from three and have a guy who doesn't normally play give you 12 points, it's a tough matchup. But what I would try to do seriously, I would try to minimize three pointers and try to make them a two point team because that's the only way you can kind of gain the advantage. And then if you shoot well from three, then you obviously have a, a statistical advantage. Um, how you do that, if Illinois defends the three well, then they're going to have a chance. And that's kind of what Illinois does try to do. They try to force you into taking high, not low percentage, difficult shots. They'll give them up. They'll let you take a running uh, jumper, you know, maybe six, seven feet away from the rim. Uh, if you make it, you make it. But then they're going to basically try to you know, storm the court the other way. Sure. I- I'm still trying to scout the game myself. Uh, over the last few hours since that preview that I did or the recap of the Sweet 16 game, I said that I'm pretty sure that you, I mean UConn is clearly the better team, and I I do agree with you in the sense that I mean I had a double digit loss uh, prediction tomorrow, and I don't think I'm going to change that. But on the same note, and you know, feel free to disagree with me here. I do think that like Iowa State is a fantastic defensive team. Mm-hmm. The way Illinois is built is to kind of bother what Iowa State is really good at. You one of you which is which is what. Well, we I'm have uh, five guys. We have seven guys over six foot six who can all mm-hmm. shoot, who can all drive to the rim, and they can all pass. So Iowa mm-hmm. State's a smaller team, and we physically overpowered them in our Sweet Sixteen matchup. Now UConn is a big team themselves, like you know, as we kind of talked about before. But UConn sure. kind of we, UConn kind of uses that size as a, a way to dominate opponents. What I'm saying is I'm kind of turning this around on you in the sense where mm-hmm. I saw your message earlier, like, you know, why does this guy think uh, Illinois' size is going to bother UConn? UConn is bigger. Well, I'm kind of turning around on you at this point saying one of the advantages that you have over other teams, the size, is not really an advantage that you're going to have against Illinois. Besides uh, the big guy in the middle, of course, sure, mm-hmm. we don't have anyone that's going to uh, match up that way. And I honestly... <sighs> I don't know if I'm going to say this correctly. I think that there's major Dwayne Wade O2 Marquette vibes that I'm getting from Terrence Shannon Jr. Uh, this tournament. He's just he's he's someone who can get guys into foul trouble, and I think that's going sure. to be key. I mean, I think Illinois has to play a perfect game, and Terrence may have to go for 35. He may have to drop another 40 burger, but. I do think that, uh, you know, outside Purdue, of course, you know, you both are kind of the Titans still left in the tournament. If there's another team that I had to kind of pick that could go up against UConn, honestly, you know, I would take our chances just as much as anyone else's. Your thoughts? No, I, I, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't disagree with you there because I think you have the firepower. But the, the problem that I see is, and I said this on my show today, is y'all have the 84th ranked defense, according to Ken Baum. There are teams like Miramac in Seattle teams that people are going to laugh at that have a better statistical defensive percentage than you do. Do you have better athletes? hundred percent. But defense is about want. How much does Illinois want to stop UConn on defense? If they play a street fight and they can really dig in like they did against Iowa state, here's the problem. Iowa state can't score. Right. You, we know UConn can. They're the, they're the technically the better offensive team statistically from Ken Palm, right? They're the number one offense in the country. So from a from a stylistic perspective, I really do think that UConn's size everywhere and athleticism everywhere, I think your Illinois is, is gonna be kind of shocked by it, to be honest with you. Not not like when a when a, a big team plays a mid major, but with how relentless this team is, not only on offense, but on defense. They play seven, stretch to eight, maybe nine if, the, if someone gets in foul trouble. Seven guys can shoot. Um Samson Johnson's the only guy who can't step out and shoot a three because he's more of a, a rim runner and, a, and a, a defensive guy. But I also think having uh, – I think it's – what's what's Hawkins' first name? I apologize. Coleman. Coleman so Coleman Hawkins is a, is a good player. He's, he's more of a power forward even though he's touching seven feet and, and more of a shooter. I think that actually helps UConn 
because it takes it, it when they don't necessarily have to put Klingon on him. Why not put Caravan on him? Why not put Samson Johnson when he when he comes in? It'll keep uh, 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 Klingon out of foul trouble. So I really feel like there's there's no good answers for Illinois. The the this I think the the roadmap for Illinois, if I'm putting on my scout hat, is scout hat is getting Klingon in foul trouble so that he's not protecting the rim. So then you have free lanes for Terrence Shannon to get to the basket. And also getting Steph Castle in foul trouble. If Steph Castle has a good defensive game, he is our he is like circa uh, Ron Artest, Detroit. You know, you know that type of player. Where this game, Dan Hurley is going to say, "We don't care if you score. We want you to exert all of your energy stopping Terrence Shannon. We don't care if you if a, if, a, if you shoot a basket all game. Just do you stop this guy defensively and grab rebounds. He's done it before. So." He did it with, I know he's a much smaller player, but that guy, Boo Booey from Northwestern, came in averaging 24 or 5, 25 points a game. He had eight points when they were down 25, and he came in and scored like seven when it didn't matter. Mm-hmm. So it's that's that's what UConn's going to do. They're going to say, if this guy can beat us with our best defender, God bless him. I don't think you're going to see a lot of help. And if they do, it's going to be on hedging screens. It's uh, that's That's just what I've seen all year. It's like, if you have one guy that can beat us, the whole our whole team is going to step up and be the rest of your guys. We got forty four people watching across all platforms right now. I really do appreciate that. Uh, while you're here, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Uh, we're we just passed the five hundred subscriber mark. Uh, we're close to six hundred now. Uh, we've uh, Illini fans love their March Madness, and we are uh, really appreciating the interest that you guys have shown in the show. I'm going to bring on another guest. Uh, I guess we're kind of having a locked on party here. I'm going to bring on go. Sam Ober from Locked On Cubs. Sam, thanks uh, for joining us today. Thank you. Can you guys hear me? I don't have my, my normal podcast set up. <laughs> I can hear you just fine. And uh, th- we're, we're not going to talk Cubs right off the bat. Uh, Sam is also a very big Illini fan. And so I invited him on. Similar to myself, sure. a big Cubs fan, a big uh, Illini fan. And uh, I figured we can give kind of like a, two perspectives, two ideas, two questions, you know, uh, that we can talk to Mark about. And Sam, I know you've been listening to the interview. Do you have any questions for Mark right now? You know, no, I, I, so I spent, I spent a good amount of the afternoon uh, watching UConn tape and trying to find uh, weaknesses and I failed. Um <laughs> So, you know, I agree with a lot of the stuff you said. Obviously, I watched, I, you know, we don't get a chance to watch much UConn or Big East, but, you know, all the stuff that he had uh, that he said graded out with what I said. You know, for me, from an Illini perspective, you know, I don't like to promote the happy to be here mantra. Um, but I, I will say as, as a fan, you know, I remember the 05 team extremely well. I was 12. Um, to just be back here does feel really, really good. Um, and you know, I do think if I, if I were to make a case for Illinois, I don't think there are many basketball cases. Um, I think the case is the case really is you're playing with house money. You're loose. You have a star player. Um, you know, I, I think what Mark said about castle, I mean, he, he's, he's an all world kind of defender. Uh, and, and the way Shannon plays, you know, Brad always says, Illinois doesn't really run a lot of stuff through Shannon. Right. So if Castle's going to be chasing him around in the half court, you know, th- there's a chance, you know, with cuts and transition, maybe you could pick up an early two on him. Um, mm-hmm. and, and that's, that, that's how it is. Or, or maybe with Klingon, you know, I really agree with what Mark said about Klingon kind of being a, 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 a version of Zach Eady, but he's actually kind of trickier because Eady just sits in the paint. Whereas, whereas Klingon looks like he could really come out and guard and bother people. He's got quicker feet. He's a much better NBA prospect than Zach Eady is. Um, so it, it's tough, but, but I think if Illinois could get out in transition, play with confidence, play loose, um, I at least, I at least think that they could give them a game. Yeah. I mean, I, I do agree. It's uh, UConn's going to be a daunting team. Uh, for me, it's like, I think the key is going to be Terrence kind of doing what he does best and trying to get a couple of guys on UConn in foul trouble. A little bit early. We need to. We can't have a repeat performance uh, of our free throw shooting against uh, Iowa State and do it again, again against UConn. We need all the free points that we can get. And you know, Terrence is going to be a 
big part of that. I'm really interested in seeing my the, my two favorite matchups is I want to see who's going to guard Damask, and I'm assuming they're going to put Klingon on Ty Rogers, similar similar to what uh, Purdue Ooh. did yeah. with Edie, and so you kind of you need Ty to do what Ty Rogers does really well. You need him that game because obviously he doesn't score much. You know, he gets all his points off of rebounds, hustle points that way. So if he's not able to contribute his you go, you know, you offensive go to rebounding, Goody. you got to go to Goody quick. Exactly. Like, you know, you, I think you're going to find out very early in the game, whether this can be a Ty Rogers game or not, because if not, then we have to go to the, you know, pass shooting lineup. And that's when we bring in Goody. And now we have five guys who can basically right. launch three pointers, uh, stay in front of UConn the best that they can. Now, you know, UConn, obviously, I watched the same tape as you did. And so all these back cuts and just constant motion, it's it's going to be, you know, tough for Illinois to kind of keep up. I, it's funny. We're 26 minutes in, and I know I'm going to get comments, uh, people watching this video. <laughs> Again, saying, Sonny, there you go. I don't know why. So, a line I hate, or you, I don't know why you, you know, host an Illinois oh. show. But, guys, the team is just very good. That's all I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. I'm also sitting here telling Mark that I do see a path for Illinois winning. I don't know if it's going to happen. I don't know how confident I am. But the team, the way, again, that I feel that we're capable of doing, if we get an off night from UConn, if UConn plays perfectly, then forget it. They'll cover the spread. The spread opened at 7.5. I think I've seen it as high as 10 uh, at some books right now. And they'll probably cover that spread easily. But if there's a game script where Terrence is able to get a couple guys in foul trouble, all of a sudden Klingon has to sit uh, on the bench for a little bit, and we're kind of able to – you know, expose, get easy baskets, which UConn usually doesn't give up, but, and some of their guys have some rough shooting nights, you know, yeah. then who knows the path is, we just got to keep it close. What I'm worried about is we keep it close for 30, 35 minutes. And then the, the problem with UConn is they're just so methodical. They can out grind you because they're so good at offense and so good at defense. And that's where I'm fearing that ultimately uh, you can, you can, can uh, kind of pull away from the game. Yeah, guys. I mean, typically two things happen in a UConn game. Or if, if both things happen, then you have an exa- a Xavier performance where they win by 40. If one thing's happen, it's, it's, it's a 20-point win or a 15-point win, which is their defense shows up, their offense is struggling a little bit, they're not hitting their threes, and they hold a team to like a six- or seven-minute drought where they haven't hit a field goal. That's happened numerous times this year when, on days where they're just kind of like not firing on all cylinders. Or you get them where it's a back and forth game and they're kind of they're building a lead. It's four. It's seven. Their defense gets a couple stops. Now it's 11. It's back and forth. It stays around nine or 11. And then it gets all the way up to 20 eventually because that defense still shows up. That's that's to me the difference in this game. It's not. Listen, like I told you earlier in the show. It's the anniversary of the 1999 UConn National Championship team today. They beat Duke, a 37-1 and team that everyone said was invincible. So if there's a parallel to Illinois here, I know we were also a one seed then. We were 34-2, and two, so it's not like we were, you know, a Cinderella. Right. But everyone, there's not a person alive that gave UConn a chance, so much so that at the beginning of that broadcast, Jim Nance was interviewing Khalid el and he said, what's the game plan tonight? He said, we're going to shock the world. And that was it. And everybody, and I'm getting chills thinking about that because I was a senior in high school, like screaming at my television, freaking out over this game. So, Illini faithful, you have a chance. There's no, I'm, not, I'm, I'm sitting here telling you, you can win this game. You're talented. You have great players. I wouldn't bet on it, but – you're a fan. Like, of course, I, I I think you can win. But I think also eight times out of ten, UConn wins this game. Is it the two games where they play poorly and Illinois plays a great game? That's that's what we're looking at tomorrow. Mm-hmm. That's my thoughts. All right, Mark, final prediction. Do you guys cover the spread? Yeah, um, I think we do. Um, I think, listen, guys, we talked about being neutral, home, this is a home game, guys. This is Stores North. We're in Boston. It's an hour away from campus. This is not. This is not out west. This is not in you know playing in Detroit. This is not you know in Boca Raton. This is in Boston. The UIs are going to be. I, and I've heard because I'm not there. 
from tons of fans that Illinois travels and you guys are going to be there too, but it's going to be 80, 20. So you're not going to get the, the, the love. Like if you start to kind of, you know, pull off a, a slight kind of lead where everyone starts to root for the other team, that, that Boston crowd is going to be like, let's get going. Let's, you know, kicking into gear. They're going to be on UConn side from the start. So, um, it's a, it's going to be daunting. I think the score, uh, I think it's going to be like something similar to the Northwestern game where we pull away and then you guys kind of make a little run. But I think it's going to be around a 14, 15 point game. Thank you so much for coming on, Mark. Uh, again, if you don't mind, uh, let uh, let the folks know where they can find you. Sure. It's uh, on X. It's at Mark Sinetto, CBB. Uh, and you can also uh, look at at Locked On, UConn. Um, and you know, locked on podcast network. Um, check out the show on YouTube, anywhere you get your podcasts, Apple, Spotify, it's all free. Uh, sometimes they throw my show on the Fire TV channels app. So if you have that, you can check it out there too. I do have one final question, Mark. If you okay. guys uh do beat Illinois and then uh, on the other side of the bracket, it's uh, was it Alabama Clemson? Clemson? Clemson, yeah. I mean, I think you guys kind of cakewalk through them. I think the winner of this game is going to the final. What, what are your thoughts on Purdue in general? Because obviously, you know, they're the big juggernaut on the other side of the bracket who, you know, they've got another, you know, cheat code in Zach ED. They've got shooters this year uh, compared to last year. Um, what's your confidence level on UConn? Uh, should you be playing the Boilermakers in the final? I think we match up like really, really good against Purdue. And I'll give you for this reason. Um, they won't double Zach Eady. If Zach Eady scores 40 points, okay. But they're not going to let let Braden Smith. They're not going to let Ferry. They're not going to let uh, these guys beat them. The way I just watched watch Gonzaga fly around the court and, you know, leave these guys open. If you listen to um, – I've said this on, the, on my podcast. You come lost against Creighton. They were up 11-3 to three to start that game on the road. Kl- Klingon picks up his second foul. He goes out. Then they started to chase, and that's how Creighton got comfortable. It's the only way they lose to Purdue. That's the only way they lose to a, a team like Illinois is if they have to start chasing shooters. If they can stay at home and play their defense, twos, do- twos don't matter. That To them, twos don't matter. It's, it's about making threes and stopping threes. Well, I'd like to wish you good luck, Mark, but uh, I think the <laughs> consensus here is uh, we're going to need it a little bit more than you guys. So uh, let's just hope that, uh, if nothing else, it's a good, fun, classic March Madness game. Uh, you know, Hopefully a challenge that you guys haven't had to face in the tournament in two years or so. So I'm hoping at least it's an exciting game uh, for the Illini. Thank you for so much for coming on. No problem. Before I leave you, this is a stat. Last two, last two NCAA tournaments, the nine games, UConn has only is has not led only for thirty three seconds in those nine games. So, good luck. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming on, Mark. Take care, guys. All the best. All right. Thank you again, Mark, for coming on. Uh, again, we have about uh, 71 people now uh, watching across all platforms. I really appreciate you guys watching this late at night. I know this is the second show that I'm doing today, and it's just uh, because you guys enjoy the content. You guys keep showing up. You guys keep commenting. So I'll keep doing it. We haven't gotten many questions in the chat today, so you know, feel free to ask. Um, I'd love to, you know, Sam is going to be on with me for another 10, 15 minutes or so. Um, you know, we're just going to kind of talk a little Illini uh, basketball. It's Friday night. You know, talk a little Cubs. Cubs season started. Um, you know, it's uh, – Sam, let's just start with that. Game one, Justin Steele goes down, <laughs> and all of a sudden we're going to be missing our ace for – I don't think they've uh, announced it yet, but it looks like at least there's going to be a DL stint. Am I right? Yeah, Sonny. It was, it was kind of classic because, you know – you know, when you do a podcast every day, like Lockdown Cubs, the off season can get very, uh, very dark, <laughs> very boring, very frustrating, and you're just you're counting down the days. And and when you get to when you get to opening day, sure you want to win opening day, but really it's just like, hey, it's if this is now a six month marathon. Let's not have anything that could really disrupt. Um, you know, what, what that could be. And, and, and maybe the most irreplaceable guy on the entire team um, goes down. I, I, yes, it's going to be an IL stint. It's going to be at least two, three starts. I, my goal is for him to be back May 1st. Um, 
So yeah, it was rough, man. Last night was so crazy for me because so on opening day, you know, we do a live show right after the game, right? Yeah. And the Illinois game's going on. Yeah. And so, you know, I'm I'm not, you know, the Cubs are my team, but but Illinois basketball is right up there. And so right when Illinois started, I was watching with my dad. I put Illinois on the main TV and I was just I was really kind of just watching the Cubs really like with a side eye because like this is the first Sweet 16 game in, in 19 exactly, years. Right. I, I'm yeah. going to get another uh, a Cubs game on Saturday and then another one after that. <laughs> yeah. And so then I had to record the show live and people were commenting because they could see me like with the corner of my eye watching the game. And it was just it was a, it was a wild experience uh, last yeah. night. I, I, I needed to, to take some sort of tranquilizer. Yeah, same with me. You know, it was, uh, I was super excited. Uh, I had uh, taken my kids out there on spring break right now, where my five five year old is, and so she's just at home and she's a bundle of energy. But I knew that evening, I, I had the Cubs on at six o'clock, and I've got the Illini on at nine o'clock, and I, you know, Dad just wants to watch this game. So gotta leave him. I I took him out to the playground. We went to the park. We were running around with the dog. It was just simply one of those, you know get them as exhausted as possible so I can sit back, relax, have an adult beverage and watch that two of my favorite teams. Sam, I'm curious, like what makes you an Illini fan? Yeah. So I actually didn't go to Illinois, but my dad did. And so Mm -hmm. he just raised me as an Illini fan and Mm -hmm. I fell in love with, with, with the, with the team, with the colors. I mean, I also root for the Illini football team too. Mm -hmm. Um, Obviously that's not, not as, productive as the basketball team and then really and then 2005 came and I just felt like like to this day I mean obviously 2016 Cubs and stuff but like the 05 Illinois team is is in my on my Mount Rushmore my favorite teams of all time and then a close friend of mine who I'm sure as an Illinois fan you you've heard of was Brandon Paul um so he's he's a good friend he's a good friend of mine to this day so then when he went there um you know for four years it got I was even more invested because I was rooting for the team and I had a friend on the team and so I've, I've always just been a diehard. I, I, I'm, you know, really appreciative of what Brad's done, um, turning the program around. I thought, I thought, uh, Thursday night was so big for him because, you know, he'd done so many great things for this program, but there was just that, but, but March. And, and I know we had gotten to the sweet 16, but in doing so you beat Moorhead state and you beat Duquesne. Now you beat a premier team in Iowa state, right. uh, big 12 tournament champs two seed. I thought we were the more talented, better team, all game. Um, I think if we played them in a seven game series, we'd beat them in six relatively easily, but it was still a really big marquee win for him where he'll never admit it, but you know, it's, it's a monkey off his back as well. And, you know, transitioning into tomorrow night, like that's why the the monkey's off your back. This is, you know, to me, the three best teams left in the tournament, in my opinion, are UConn, Purdue and us. I really believe that. Like I, I'm, I got this Houston Duke game on. It's a slop fest. It's gross. Um, I think we're better. I think we're better than Alabama. I know we're better than Clemson. Um, and so, you know, you're, you're, you're just playing the team that, that eventually you're probably going to have to go through anyway early. And, you know, to Mark's point, like I, I, if this is a seven game series, UConn probably wins in five. If this is a 10 game series, maybe they win eight two. but there's, there's a, there's a chance. This is, this is, you know, basketball it's one right. game there's yeah. a reason why the nba has seven game series to determine these things because one basketball game can be extremely random you don't know about foul trouble you don't know about three point shooting there's there's a lot that can go right and illinois still has the best college basketball player on the court and and that's always a good thing so you know i am i'm going into the game relaxed i know that'll probably change 3 minutes in yeah. but i'm going in relaxed and and i'm going in saying you know what the heck Let's go. Let's let's give let's give them let's give them their best shot. They're these are these are kids. You know they're not. This is you're not going up against the '96 Bulls here. Right. Yeah. Same here. Like for me, kind of alluding back to what you said, it is just kind of house money at this point. Right. Sweet 16 was the ultimate goal of the season. Right. We had to get this out under the shadow that uh, has been kind of surrounding the program about Brad not being able to make it to the second weekend. But then to beat an Iowa State team that is actually very good and like you said from the moment that ball was tipped off it was clear who the better team was on that court uh you know i said this on an earlier show a buddy of mine uh who was watching the game with me he's an nba guy he's not really a college basketball guy and he couldn't believe that iowa state was the two seed uh in this tournament compared to uh where we were at number three and he clearly said that illinois 
I would say just look scared. They they look like they're nervous. Uh, some of their sets in the uh, first half were just very awkward, and the shots that they took were very, right. you know, right. not traditional. And I I just don't think they were ready for the limelight. Whereas, you know, Brad and the team that we've built now is you know just kind of full of veterans and guys who know that this any game that they're playing could very well be the last game that they play. Right. And so I think even though we are very content with the idea that, you know, it's house money. You know, we're playing in the Elite Eight. Nobody thinks we're going to win this game. The spread keeps getting bigger and bigger in uh, UConn's favor. I think the guys in that locker room right now, they're just having uh, so much fun. I think Brad Underwood got, you know, like he, I thought the game plan that he had uh, in store for Iowa State was fantastic. Because yep. TJ, uh, I forget how to say his last name, uh, Iowa State's head coach is a fantastic coach. And uh, absolutely from all the scouting I was doing from Iowa state, like, you know, I really thought that this game could have been a problem because we know, you know, the digs that people take uh, at Underwood about his game planning and his ability to make adjustments mid game, but Underwood completely outclassed uh, TJ, at least in the game yesterday. And so once he's proven that now, again, we're at the point where, you know, I wish I brought this point up uh, to Mark earlier. Like if there's three, four ga- uh, game days in between the matchup and you give Dan Hurley ample amount of time to game plan and plan, you know, for the Illini, that's one thing. But Illinois is very, very hard to play defense against because we have two styles where, you know, we have Shannon running down the court like a bull. And then we also have the Marcus Domask, more slow, methodical booty ball from the three-point line, slowly backing you down. It's a hard team to kind of mimic in practice. And, you know, just trying to – so it's it's going to be a look that they – I don't think they've seen this season. Yeah. And so, yeah. again, that's kind of why I think there is an outside shot that Illinois, if UConn uh, starts the game off missing some shots, we might be able to sneak one out. Yeah, and and I mean the booty ball stuff's gonna be tough because of the size of UConn. Like, there's you can't really they're all our size, if not bigger. Right. Um, but I will say this, and, and you know I don't I don't you know know I, I don't, I'm not being inappropriate. I'm getting a little tired of like the Danny Hurley shtick. Um, you know the like 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 you know it's just I was li- I was listening to the interview today. It's a little bit much. Um, this guy, I feel like we're talking about this guy like he's John Wooden here, you know. Um, so you know, I I, I I just know during the game they're going to show him fifty thousand times and talk about how many M and M's he eats before the game. Like anybody cares, you know, whatever. Um, he's kicking yeah. out people watching the game. I don't know yeah, if you saw not, that yeah. a couple of weeks ago. But look, man, like this has been a great season. Uh, the, the, the team has dealt with a lot and, and, and now you go out and, and you, and you put your money on the table on, uh, on a Saturday night prime time against the best team in the country for a chance to go to the final four. You can't ask for anything more than this, go out, play your best. Um, you know, I thought he made a really good point. The game being in Boston. I mean, they have a lot of crowd. It is almost like a road game. That's probably impacting the spread a little bit, but, um, I, if you're at, you haven't asked, but if you're asking me my prediction, um, I do not think this game that this that will be a blowout. I do not. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just think this team has too much pride. Um, I, I think it's going to be one of those games. It's going to. I feel like it'll be one of those games where we make a, a, a couple different runs, cut it within two, three, and maybe we just don't have enough in the end. But the other thing to to, to mention is this team that we're playing against. They do not play a lot of close games. So right. if you're able to keep it close late, we actually. In the Big Ten Tournament uh, Championship, we played three straight close games, found a way to close it out. Um, we were only up one at half against Moorhead State, went on a huge run. And then last night was a close game. It wasn't pretty towards the end the way we closed it out, but we did. So if it's within three, four points late, that's when you know, 19, 20-year-old kids on UConn, they might and, – and that's also, too – where being kind of the home team could, could work against you a little bit because you could start to hear the crowd get nervous too. Nervous, yep. You know, the nervous silence or the nervous cheer or whatever. You keep it within four, five, six with four or five minutes to go. You never know what could happen. And then, you know, maybe Shannon gets hot from three and, and, and you could steal one. So I'm excited about it. I'm relaxed. I will not be watching the Cubs tomorrow night. Um, I, I don't feel great about that at all. So I'll be, I'll be, I'll be watching Illinois and, uh, Hopefully, if it means an Illinois win, the Cubs can lose by 15-plus. 
<laughs> That's just one out of 162. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, like you said, you know, UConn's used to blowing everybody out. And, you know, I kind of mentioned the stat earlier that they haven't had a game within 13 in the tournament in two years. But I believe, and someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think Illinois has lost by more than nine all season long. Definitely haven't been blown out. So, you know, it's, again, one of those factors where we're used to being down. You know, we're used to, you know, taking a team's punch immediately and then slowly grinding our way back just because we're so hard to kind of uh, guard uh, defensively. UConn, it's, you know, he just said the stat, uh, stat, right? They've been losing for 33 seconds. Or no, they haven't been leading for 33 seconds. Uh, that's it. So they haven't had to come back uh you know, in this sort of environment. So, you know, things will have to go perfectly. I, I truly do believe that for Illinois, but yep. I think that things can fall perfectly. Like, I don't think it's, uh, I think I said it was a 14 point loss yesterday, or sorry, in the, my previous show, but I'm starting to change my mind a little bit. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm starting to get the vibes. And again, I was watching my, my it was my buddy who made the comparison. I don't know if you're uh, listening like the Terrence Shannon right now that we're watching is giving me D Wade vibes. And, you know, it's one of those where, you know, the, the whistle was very friendly for D Wade. And if the whistle could be equally as friendly for uh, Terrence Shannon Jr., who knows? And that's all I'm saying. I'm not saying like the guy, Mark bet who just took Illinois straight up in a bet. I don't think that was a very wise choice on your answer, but I do think that there's an opportunity there for the Illini. And, you know, it's just we're playing kind of carefree right now. Uh, Brad is on his game. You know, Danger, Lou Goody, all these guys who earlier in the season, you know, couldn't even get onto the court. You know, we put them in tough positions. You're kind of seeing the whole iron sharpens iron now. You know, they, they're stepping. The, the big moments are now, and they're stepping up. And so, I don't know. I, I think it's a. I think it's going to be a close game now. I don't. I haven't revised my prediction yet. I'll probably sleep on it, but yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Sam, uh, any Cubs thoughts before we go? Uh, oh. <laughs> a, a, I know. A, a really tough month of April just got a lot tougher. Yeah, that schedule's uh, not easy. Cubs have a lot of depth, but but depth is depth for a reason. It's not meant to replace stars. Justin Steele's probably a star. Um, you know, you're going to need guys to step up. You're going to need guys to, to, to hit, you know, Dansby Swanson, Nico Horner, Ian Happ, the, the core of this group is going to have to hit early so you could bank in some wins. Um, uh, but I think if they can just hang in there, stick around 500 as the, the month ends, then you get steel back, you hit may schedule lightens up a little bit and they'll make their run. But, you know, r- right now you're just w- with steel being out, Having to play Texas, you get a little breather with Colorado, but then you get the Dodgers, then you go, I think, to to San Diego, you go to the Mariners, the Diamondbacks. I mean, it gets it gets tough. You you just you can't win anything in April, but you just don't want to lose anything. So I think them just st- staying afloat, trying to get themselves, you know, back healthy with with Steele, and then you know make the run uh, l- later on because the division will allow them to have some some rough stretches. Exactly. I think that that's kind of the key point um, being in the division that we're in. Uh, we just kind of have to keep afloat. Right. And, you know, I know Cubs brass has gotten a lot of heat from Cubs fans about uh, not spending a little bit more money. You know, it, uh, this loss of Justin Steele would be a lot easier to swallow if we had Jordan Montgomery Please. Um, pitching. So it's one of those. I I just think right now, you know, with the Cubs, with their AI, their IV program or whatever that they're using, like their plan is to just stay afloat, be contending for the division, see where they're at come July. And then I can see, you know, obviously we have a abundant full of talent uh, in the farm system. It's going to, uh, oh, wait, hold on. We have Demond commenting. It's all about the red Redbirds. Okay, Demond, you are now blocked from the show. I'll figure out how to do that. Please do not bring that nonsense into a line I cast. The Redbird, uh, the Red, the Redbirds will be very lucky to get out, get 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 a win this weekend. Assuming he's talking about St. Louis. Yeah, Demond. Of course, I'm just cheating, uh, teasing. But yeah, I just think we're going to try to keep it close, uh, stay 500. Luckily, we're in a division that's not going to run away from us, right? Unless like absolute disaster happens. And then when it's time to make a move, we'll have a better idea. We'll have 50, 60 games of uh, data to know what's working and what's not working. 
and will be able to make the moves. I, I think the team thinks that they're ready to contend now. Yeah, I think I think I think they think they're ready to win the central. And then I think they're kind of hoping to to roll the dice out in October and see what happens. I don't think I, I think it, it's it would be lazy and inappropriate to say that that they have a chance against the Dodgers or the Braves over the course of 162. But I think they they kind of look, and it's, this makes me physically sick to say, um, but I think they look at the Diamondbacks model of last year. Same thing, yep. Yeah, which is just, hey, just get in and then get hot at the right time. Most of my listeners on my show and and me included say, hey, love the rebuild, but we also are the Chicago bleeping Cubs. So right. why can't we go out and spend with the Dodgers and spend with the Braves or whatever? And, and what the Diamondbacks did. Yeah, and then the Diamondbacks, of course, ironically, after Rick had said that, they went out and got Montgomery. So, no Cubs talk anymore for me. I'm 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 orange and blue all the way through right now. And uh, let's let's get a win tomorrow, and we'll, we could talk Cubs maybe 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 in June. I love it, Tim. Thank you again so much for coming on. Uh, let the folks at least know where they can find you uh, once we're done here. Yeah, locked on Cubs. Um, you you could listen. Uh, you could listen on YouTube, a Locked On Cubs channel, or you could just, you know, Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast, Locked On Cubs. We pretty much just recap every game, and uh, you know, we try and make it uh, entertaining for you, even when it when it's not. It's fantastic con- uh, content. I, I'm tuning in every single day. I'm really, really. Uh, you guys do a, such a great job, so that's why I kind of reached out to you to see if you'd be. Yeah, interested I'm, in I'm glad I was able to so. come on, man. I, I, I actually, I had some plans tonight. They fell through, and then you sent me the message. I hopped on. I'm sorry, I was a little bit late, but uh, always respect. Oh, uh, always respect people doing doing podcasts and doing shows like this. And I'm, I'm happy for you that you're getting some some uh, listens with Illinois Rolling, and 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 I hope. Uh, I hope I hope you I hope we got a couple more couple more games left. Sounds good, Sam. Hopefully, don't let this be the last time you come on. Okay, how's that? Yeah, you got a deal, man. All right, Sam. Thank you so much. All right, man. Have a good one. Too. There you have it. Uh, did another fifty-two minutes, so we've got about two hours of uh, content that we've provided for you guys today. If there's anything you guys want to talk about, leave uh, uh, leave a comment there. While you're here, everyone, hit that like button. Uh, we have. Uh, we had 196 people watching collectively across all platforms today. So I really do appreciate that. If you're on Twitter, log on to YouTube real quick. Hit that subscribe button for me. We're 10 away from 600. 10. Um, our goal was 500. So you guys really helped me out on that front. Um, special thanks to Armchair Illini, uh, the new umbrella for which uh, Illini Cast is um, going to be um, broadcasting from. We're really excited about that partnership. Um, check out the website. They're producing fantastic content. There's articles. Uh, check out their basketball podcast, uh, Illini Basketball Pod. Those guys, uh, they're a little different style than what we do. Um, you know, they're two friends who obviously just like, it's it's fun. You're, when you watch their shows, it's just too, you're, it's like you're watching the game with your own friends. Uh, they're, they're going back and forth. Uh, definitely check them out. Uh, I should have told Sam, Sam's a football fan. So if Sam likes football. You know, uh, Illini cast, uh, we're going to basically start our spring coverage uh, very shortly. I already have a couple um, guests lined up and thoughts. Um, I just want to kind of obviously focus on what we're all talking about right now. And that's uh, Illini basketball. Jeffrey G, hello again. Thank you for tuning in the second time today. Uh, Jeff says, IL and STL. Uh, I'll, I'm with you on one of them. Okay. Uh, I'm not a, I'm not going to acknowledge the team in st louis but um yeah i don't know the more i think about it the more i'm confused about what's going to happen i can honestly see a whole different bunch of game scripts happen i can see a game where uconn kind of establishes their dominance early and as mark says they just kind of it's a 20 point lead and then illinois kind of makes up ground at the end of the game but the scoreboard is a lot closer than the game actually is but i can also see a path and again you know marks it uh two out of ten chance that you know if things go illinois way that they can come out and uh win a game two times out of ten could that could tomorrow be one of those two nc state won today nc state beat a very good marquette team a team that you know illinois lost to uh, i think in the fourth or fifth game of the season NC State, 
a lot of people don't think should have been in the tournament. So it's kind of uh, it's it's March Madness. This is the magic. This is what this is what makes this my favorite sports event of the year. Anything can happen, and the way our guys are playing, the way you know, just the vibes of our team, you know, our coaching staff, the whole you know pushing in the chairs uh, routine that's kind of starting to go viral. Uh, with everyone and you know we've got national media asking about it now and the kids uh you know at the press conference just kind of giggling it's just an easy team to root for and you know i know i'm not going to be sad when we lose because or if we lose because it's yukon yukon is arguably the best team like some people have been, are essentially comparing it to one of the great teams of all time you know there there's a reason they've only lost three games but I'm going to be more sad because I'm going to miss this group of guys. You know, Marcus Domask, if, you know, more than likely this is the last that he's going to be uh, playing uh, D1 college basketball. I wish we could have him for another year. But, you know, who knows? I know we're going to apply for a waiver if we haven't already. But we don't tend to have very good luck with that stuff. You know, Coleman Hawkins, he can come back for a COVID year, but does he? Maybe. I mean, the way he's been playing, I think the way he's kind of developed uh, throughout the season, he might get that NBA call that he's waiting for. You know, with Shannon gone, with Damask gone, I hope that we're able to funnel a little bit uh, more money towards Coleman to kind of, you know, have him come back. I'd, I'd love it. I think if he was in charge of a team, our team next year, you know, leading the young guys that we have like Hansberry and uh, Morez, those are really, really talented guys. And, you know, they could use the leadership of a Coleman Hawkins, but, you know, more than likely Coleman's gone. Terrence Shannon, he's essentially already said his goodbyes uh, to to the fan base. And, you know, we know that our next loss will be the last time we see a lot of these guys. You know, Quincy's a senior. Justin Harmon, he's a senior. He's gone. You know, the team that's going to be on the floor next year is going to look a whole lot different than the team that we got to watch this year. And we don't know if that's for the good or for the bad. Because last year's team, you know, you had the Matthew Meyer, we had the Sky Clark, the uh, Jordan Epps. That team is looks a lot different than the one we have now. But now it's for the better. You know, Brad kind of adjusted his uh, strategy. And this team, we collectively, I think, is one of the more likable teams that we've ever had. Last year, not so much. I think all of us could tell the vibes are kind of off. What's it going to look like next year? You know, again, like as Jeffrey says, recruiting and portal appeal just rose in stock 100%. But you never really know until you get all the guys in the locker room. You don't know how guys are going to gel with each other. You don't know if what kind of chemistry the team is going to have. That's just something, you know, in this new portal age that it's just kind of a, it's a dice roll every single time. And so that's why I'm going to be sad. Should we uh, lose one more game this year? Not not that I'm saying we are going to. Uh, you know, we've got a very daunting task in front of us tomorrow. But I will get sad, uh, you know, again, just seeing these guys for the last time, you know, you figure if we do lose, you know, they're going to have their heads in, in the towel and there's going to be a lot of emotional young kids, uh, you know, showing their emotions. And it's it's uh, it's going to be one. Of, it's a team to remember, you know, one of the most enjoyable teams I've ever had the pleasure of watching. And now this year, because of people like you uh, covering. And so it is what it is. I think I'm going to leave it there. I'm not sure if we're going to do a post game tomorrow. I'm still trying to decide what I want to do. Uh, as I watch the game, um, there's an idea, the side of me who just wants to sit back, relax, uh, lazy. Let's uh, let me uh, get this comment. Lazy Force Gump says you have to force UConn into taking tough twos. If they make 35 plus, then tip your hat. Yeah, and luckily that's kind of what Illinois' defense is designed for. They're going to let you take those two point shots and just hope that you miss more than you make. Unfortunately, a team like UConn just doesn't miss very often but uh yeah again while you're here hit that subscribe button uh again we're at about 590 when we started this video i have no idea 
um, if it's gone up since then. Uh, we can do super chats now, which is amazing. Thank you. Uh, no one sent one before, but that's fine. I mean, if money is an issue, I'm not asking for that. But you know, it, it's a uh, it, it's a cool problem to have. You know, it's uh, it's something I'm very excited about. Just kind of learning what YouTube's new features are uh, as we grow, as we get more subs, and once we hit the 1,000 mark, that's when all of a sudden we'll start really getting noticed. So send this to you know an Illinois fan, a Yukon fan, a Cubs fan. No Cardinals fans. Uh, again, they're not allowed on the show, unfortunately. So that's just a, something I'll deal with. Um, of course, I'm kidding. But Austin and I are Cubs fans. So that's that's why I say what I say. All right, enough rambling. I got to go put my three-year-old to bed. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Just, I'm just going to say one final thing. Just, I'm older than a lot of the people I'm assuming watching. Um, at least a lot of the content creators I interact with. And I, when I say that in the 90s and the early 2000s, Sweet 16s were kind of the expectation. Like, this is what we were just supposed to do. Like, it, I don't think we were able to cherish it as much as we should have. Because then we've gone 19 years in between. And now we're back. And I just want to say, again, with this special team... I, I'm super confident, as you all know, I'm a big Brad Underwood guy. I think he's done a fantastic job. But you just never know what's going to happen. And so for the next, for the previous 24 hours and now for the next 24, enjoy it. Read some Illini content. You know, watch your favorite content creators uh, talking about Illinois. You know, just have fun with it. Uh, we're very lucky. You know, there's a lot of teams in the country that wish they were playing tomorrow night, and they're not. And, you know, Illinois, I completely agree with what Sam said. I think is one of the three best teams remaining now at this point. And, you know, while a lot of people aren't giving us a shot, I truly do think that we're a team that has the capability of beating UConn tomorrow. But I'm not going to stress out about it. I'm enjoying the ride. Tomorrow's going to be the same thing. I'm going to find a nice, I can't decide if I'm going to go out to a bar and watch the game or if I'm going to watch it in the comforts of my own home. We'll see. But uh, I'll, I'll kind of keep you guys updated via Twitter um, whether I decide to do the post game. Uh, if you're in the Discord, uh, you know, I'm commenting back and forth uh, with folks there. Uh, I've been dropping little nuggets uh, about our recruiting. Uh, there's some new uh, AJ store news uh, I, that I can't really just say publicly because I don't think it's supposed to be meant for public yet. Um, so I kind of keep that in more of a closer knit community. I'll kind of drop the link for the discord um, once I'm done with this. So join me on that. You know, we can talk, uh, we can talk baseball, we can talk basketball, we can talk whatever you guys want. Uh, obviously the attention will focus to football, once uh, the season is over, but I'm hoping we still have uh, another week to cover college basketball. So until then, everyone sit back, relax, enjoy the ride. The Illini are in the Elite Eight, and we're a damn good team.